Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to episode 12 of the Twitter tutorial series. Uh, in today's video, I'm pretty excited to finally talk about something that's a little bit more high level, and uh, that is the concept of something called a singleton. Now, singletons are sometimes hard to understand if you don't have the proper context to explain it, uh, but luckily for us, we have our Twitter application that is in the perfect place to start implementing a singleton to do some code refactoring. So let me show you guys right now exactly what we want to sort of refactor here. All right, so let's take a look at home data source controller. And inside of viewdit load, we call this method called fetch home feed, which gets our users Captain America, Iron Man, and Black Widow in this top section. The issue that we have now inside of this controller file is that uh, it really shouldn't be responsible for making all of these network calls. The controller is usually just here to render out our views and perhaps uh, manipulate the navigational stacks with uh, push and pop view controllers. So I want to remove all of this code and put it somewhere else. And this is where our singleton comes into play. Now, uh, the way to really, really understand this more easier is to first let me define what a singleton class is, and then I'll slowly kind of uh, put all of this networking code inside of that singleton. All right, so let's get started with uh, first creating a new group inside of this project. So a new group, I will just call it service like that. And uh, what goes inside of service is the question that you probably have. Let me just create a new file and I'll just call this service as well. So this is just a Swift file. And in here, I'm just going to create a struct called service like so. And what is the field that belongs in here? So a singleton sort of works like this. It really needs to just uh, have one instance uh, exist in your program at all times. And to implement that, you'll say static let shared instance. I'm just going to construct it in line, like see service like that. And this gives us our shared instance. If I build my project like so, go back to home data source controller right underneath fetch home feed, I can call service dot shared instance like that. So doing this by itself isn't really helpful for us. And uh, we really want to introduce some methods inside of this singleton. And to introduce something that we will use right now, we'll say func uh, fetch home feed like that. And in here, we'll just say uh, fetching home feed. And now we have a method called fetch home feed. So let's go back to home data source controller. And this warning right here pretty much tells us we're not really calling the instance with anything. And now we call fetch home feed. Let me comment out the fetch home feed of the controller. And I run the app to see what we get inside of our console. Yeah. So we see fetching home feed and our controller is empty uh, just like that. Let me command click in here. It goes back to my singleton and it says fetching home feed. So this is how you would define your singleton with a one single shared instance for the entire application. So one other advantage of defining a class this way is that you can have properties that belong to the singleton by just declaring a let right here. And the property that we need is something that we used in the previous video called Tron. So Tron is equal to Tron of something with base URL. And so we don't have a Tron yet. So let's import Tron. And uh, while we're here, let's import Swifty JSON. Okay. So here we'll say base URL. And remember, this is something that is, I think, HTTPS. Uh, api.letsbuildthatapp.com is the base URL. So now we have this Tron guy, right? And inside of this fetch home feed, we can access Tron from above, which is this right here. And that's that right there. So we can build, we can run, everything works like it did before. And that's pretty good. Now, uh, what do we want to do with fetch home feed inside of the singleton instance? Uh, I pretty much want to refactor the networking code from home data source controller. And uh, let me just take out all of this stuff and put it inside of the uh, singleton. So let me just get rid of these comments here and perhaps get rid of that comment as well. Let's see that and that. 
And just to make this easier, let me just copy and paste this network code into the service right here. Get rid of that Tron. There we go. The one error that we are kind of hitting is this JSON error guy right there. So let's take the JSON error. And because this class is internal to home data source controller, uh, it doesn't really have access to it. So we can do that. And we get our JSON decodable. If we want it to be a little bit more clean, let's move it down here instead. So one final line to comment out is self data source. And because we're no longer inside of our controller, we don't have something called self data source. So the singleton isn't really, really uh, aware of what self data source is. So running the app now, we get fetch home feed or home food, I guess this is saying. Let me just fix this to say feed. And uh, we get successfully fetched our JSON objects along with the printing of the three, which is how many users we have inside of our JSON uh, source. So da, da, da. what do we want to do now? Let's go back to home data source controller. So now that we don't have this method being called, let's remove fetch home feed. And the other thing is that uh, we moved all of this uh, user initialization inside of home data source so we can get rid of that. And Tron is now inside of our singleton, so let's get rid of that as well. So everything has been cleaned up inside of my home data source controller so that we don't have any of this networking call anymore uh, inside of this class, which is a lot cleaner and way more easy to maintain uh, further down the road. Okay, But the problem here is that we have an empty uh, list inside of our collection view, which really needs to uh, be rendered out with a home data source object. And if you're inside of home data source controller and you're fetching the home feed with, uh, with this singleton, uh, we don't really know when the asynchronous request finishes. That's the issue we have here. And uh, what uh, the solution here is to uh, implement a something called completion block. So uh, Swift, uh, to create a completion block in Swift is really, really easy. First, you want to add in a parameter inside of your fetch home feed method. I'm just going to, to call it completion. And completion will be of this parameter type, which is kind of hard to understand at first. And it's going to be this parentheses, parentheses, with this arrow and another two parentheses like that. So if you have this parameter here, it's basically a block that you can call like this down here. So completion, and you can execute that with these two parentheses right here. So having this completion block, let's see. So one thing that's weird about Swift 3 is that you have to make it escaping like that, which now fixes the problem. Uh, if you try to go back to home data source controller, this home uh, fetch home feed now requires a completion block like this. So if I hit enter here and just say print, uh, say done uh, fetching JSON, and try to run this now to see what happens. I'm gonna run this, and I'm just going to do this step by step just to make sure you guys kind of get what the completion block is doing. All right, so we get fetching home feed, successfully fetch our JSON objects, which is this here, or this here rather, and the completion executes the done fetching JSON, which is uh, this right here. So that's how the completion block works. Pretty much we trigger some kind of action whenever the JSON is done fetching from the network. Okay, and to get the collection view to render out our users and tweets, we need to go back and uh, add in a parameter inside of the completion block, which looks like this, home data source, and then this completion call will now uh, use the parameter of the home data source right here. So let me comment out the count printing and take out that, take out that comment as well, perhaps that line. And completion is now being called with home data source. And so going back to uh, the home data source controller, the controller valve, this right here really needs to also contain a data source of some kind. So let me just wipe out this with a dot fetch and hit the enter for the completion block again. This gives us a different type of uh, completion handler. And here I can say self.datasource equals home data source. So running this, the singleton is now responsible for the network. And then upon completion, the controller will set the data source appropriately to home data source. 
and now finally it renders out the entire view inside of the collection view. So one thing I do want to go over today is uh, the sequence in which all of this code executes. So I'm going to just do this right here. So print uh, perhaps one right there. So this is the very first step. And let me just fetch home feed and we get fetch home feed. And then I just want to say print perhaps three or perhaps two. And inside of here, we have our print statement. And finally, I want to go back to the completion block here and just print out the print out three. I'm also going to execute these breakpoints inside of my singleton and controller. So that, this, and that. Okay, so with those print statements and breakpoints, this is a pretty good way to illustrate exactly what is being executed line by line. So writing this code, it's going to hit the breakpoint inside of home data source controller, which is here. So it's going to print one, right? Obviously down here, we'll say one. So hit the continue and it hits the next breakpoint. So we have print one. And uh, the question is, if I hit continue now, what do you expect to happen? Are we going to hit line 25 or line 31? So the answer is we're going to hit line 31 because this is a asynchronous call is what we call it, which means that it takes a little bit of time to complete. So let me hit the continue button and indeed we hit line 31, right? So this might be a little confusing for some of you guys, but this is how asynchronous calls work. So I'm gonna hit the continue button again. It's going to reach out to the network and after a second or two, it finishes that network call, uh, giving me line 25 right here, which is going to print successfully fetch our JSON objects. And then it's going to call completion at line 26, which takes us back to home data source controller. And uh, we execute the final print statement of this three right here. And then setting the data source uh, to the home data source from our fetch, finally rendering out our collection view. All right, so that's going to be it for today's video. Really hope you guys are able to understand how to use a singleton object to kind of clean up and refactor your code whenever it's necessary. Now, if you Google search on whether or not a singleton is a good idea or not, uh, you'll find a long discussion on some of the pros and the cons. So definitely go give that a read if you care to do so. Our source code for today's project is uh, available down below in the description. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and uh, also subscribe to the channel uh, for more videos like this. Uh, that's going to be it for me. Uh, all of you guys keep on coding and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.